Try then. So what we're going to do, you might want your pen and paper. Yeah, just to make a few notes. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to demo for you, and my guys are in as well, so obviously just while we're here, this is the kind of thing you're going to be doing for your endpoint assessment. All right, so make sure we're listening as well. Um, so all we're going to do is we're going to do a, a sole veronique, my sole version of it, but a classic dish, something we've seen before. Have you seen it before or heard of it? No? Okay, fine. Um, so basically it's very, very simple. Got a lovely, lovely lemon sole there. Okay. Um, finely diced shallot as well. This is all downstairs for you. A little bit of thyme. And the interesting thing about this dish is we're going to pair the fish with ice cold grapes, which might sound a little bit weird. However, it is absolutely delicious. I do absolutely love this dish. So you're going to be provided with some a uh, few grapes. I've also got Grand Marnier, which is an orange liqueur. Again, that orange flavour is just going to make this really, really tasty. You can use Cointreau or any orange liqueur. Very, very nice. A um, little bit of butter, a little bit of white wine, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and some cream. Okay. We've already got some fish stock already made as well, because uh, obviously the time it takes to make the fish stock. Here we can make them. Okay. Right then, here we go. So, first things first, I'm a little sauteur's pan ready. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare our lemon salt. Now we're just gonna fillet this and skin it. Um, normally we'd be taking the eyes out, the gills out, to use to make the stock. However, we've got stock made and, and to save time for the competition. We're gonna keep the bones, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with them afterwards. All right, so. Luckily for us, have we filleted fish before? Is anyone not? You've not done a song? You have? You have? have you? Yeah, sure? Yeah. Okay, fine, don't worry. The one good thing about flatfish, it actually almost comes with its own instructions. You've got this lovely tunnel. I'll tell you. Um, work. There we go, look. See a lovely line down the middle. And that basically tells us where we need to put the knife in. All right? So we're going to start just up here, all right? And I'm just going to follow down with my knife. And if I stick my knife along the line, I can feel a very small spine there, all right? And then I'm happy with that. I know where I am. And what I'm going to do now is just take my knife in. We're going to use our fit. Have you all got tonight? You haven't. OK, can one of you lend in the? If you've got a nice sharp one, you can borrow. Or you can use mine. The idea of our filleting knife, we're just going to take these lovely fillets off. Now, I'm just taking my time, all right? I want to make sure my knife is angled nicely and that my knife is resting on the bones. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everyone happy? Please stop me if you have any questions. You can see here already, if you can see on there, just coming off nicely. All right, and I'm just using that knife, bending underneath. All right, very lovely fish. We're very lucky to be using these. So I'm just taking my time, coming down. <coughs> a little bit of a sharp knife, to be honest. But there we go. Take off the first fillet. All right, beautiful fillet. I've done a poor right job with that, I'm pretty happy with that. Just gonna grab myself a check. So there's four fillets on our lemon sole. We've got the top two fillets here. This is where it differs from say a, a sea bass or a bream or, or something like that. They've only got the two fillets. These have got four, beautiful. The top two are normally thicker than the bottom two. But I'm gonna show you a little technique so they all cook nice and evenly. What we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna cut that here and do the same thing this side, taking off my other fillets. So I come. Now you will find a little bit of row in here, all right? And depending on the time of year, this if they're in their spawning season, because we don't really want them. Because some fish have, the fish have seasons, the rows get really, really big, and the fillets are actually really small, because they put all their effort into making their eggs. So sometimes, especially place this time of year, place aren't that great to get in. All right, so why are we using salt? 
we use salt because it's just nicer. It gives a nicer flavor. So again, I'm just rolling my knife down, nice long strokes, trying not to stab it in. You get to that skirt, you can just lift off. And you can see I've got that little bit of row there as well. Oh, some more guests come in. If there wasn't enough people, please, please join. <laughs> yeah. So again, I'm just going to lay my other fillet on here, but we'll, we'll skin them in a minute. So, as you can see, now what I'm going to do is turn my fish over. I might take that off like that. And I'm just going to start the process again. And you can just see, you know, I need to work on my camera. Again, there's another line along here. Okay, you should be able to see when you're down there. And again, I'm just going to start up on top of the head. Follow that line down. I do apologise about my voice. I've done so much talking. My voice is completely gone. Alright, again, I'm just going to come round. And that's what's great about this filleting knife. So I can actually just come around nice and easily. Take these fish fillets off. And just take my time. How long do they get for this? How long do they get? Fish on the spot. Do you know? You just have another fish check. And again, just working my way down, taking the fillets off, and then laying them on my tray. What we really want to see today is making sure we stay nice and clean, nice and tidy. You know, we are working with raw fish. So obviously our health and safety, make sure we keep you know, washing our hands and things like that. That's really, really important. Make sure we stay nice and organized. I really like everything to be on trays, keep ourselves constantly clean. Really, really important. Okay. So again, just take this last one off. Very straightforward. Nice, clean knife, sharp. And again, you can see that row there. Okay, so there's our fish filleted. So again, we will be looking at the carcass, see how much is left on. Done an all right job there. Um, and again, we could use that for our stock and so on. Again, students will just collect from you. All right, and we'll use them. We'll put them to good use. Nothing will get wasted. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna skin our lovely fillets. What I'm gonna do is just dry myself down. Okay, yeah, just an important point, just make sure your board is just nice and dry. You know, I see that just some of the chefs come along and their board is so wet, the fish is slipping everywhere. Yeah, really, really easy. We just keep ourselves nice, clean, organised and a nice dry board. Coming to the skinning part then, because obviously for this poaching dish we don't really want to use the skin. It's not very nice to eat. So what we're going to do is we're going to skin the fillets. All right, and all I'm going to do, and this is the best bit about this knife, is come underneath, have my knife nice and flat, and just come along between the skin and the flesh. This is quite a tricky skill. What I do to make sure I'm doing it right, because sometimes I do make mistakes, I have a little look. So I flip the fill out to have a look, see where I'm at. Through I go. Okay, so a beautiful fill of sole, the skin's come off, Again, we'll put that to one side. Lovely, look at that. Absolutely delicious. We are very, very lucky. Again, I'm just gonna take this row out. Get rid of that as well, we don't need that. So same thing again. Again, I'm just checking where I'm at. Again, lift the alpha. Delicious. Bear with me, man. These two. What to do if this goes wrong? We just start from the other end. So, for instance, I was to go through the through the skin. Don't then try and turn it over and hack at it to take the skin off. Start from the other end and work your way back along again. It's a lot easier than just trying to take it from the other side. That makes sense. Again, I'm just holding it. Take that. So yeah, making sure I take it off. None of that skin's on there. Really nice, good fillets. Am I doing all right, Leslie? You're doing great. Man. Yeah, is that right? Good. Do we know how long they've got for this? Oh, how long have they got, sorry? There was an hour and 15 minutes total for the 
Could, I better hurry up then because I'm stitching you up, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> so if I take you now, then you're going to be a bit in a bit of trouble, aren't you? All right, I'll stop talking. So again, just working my way through. And again, just checking. You know, we're going to be marking this on two parts: how you prepare the fish, yeah, and again, how you cook it. So we'll be looking at all of that. I will hurry up. Right. So what I've got now is beautiful fillets of fish. So what we're going to do, we're going to do something called a, a porpiette or a rolled fillet of fish. Are we familiar with that term? Don't worry if you're not, that's, that's why we're here. Um, and all I'm going to do is just put a little bit of seasoning. So we're just going to season my old salt pot again. Um, where this, the skin side. So you'll be able to see where the, this, the skin side. So I'm going to lay them all out like that. Yeah. And I'm just going to season them with a little bit of salt because we're going to get this cooking straight away. Don't season it way before cooking because the salt's going to start to draw the moisture out and then you're going to have a fantastic sauce of dry fish. All right. And also what I'm going to do, and I've, I've always used this, some people might say I'm wrong, just a little bit of cayenne pepper because I feel it dissolves not so clear sauce. Just a little bit, not too much. So again, my students, this is something that you could think about doing for your assessment. Yeah, this version, all right. Sat there patiently in the back. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna roll them to make our pork yet. So we're gonna start from the tail end and we're just gonna roll them. It's quite nice sometimes. You can put a little mousseline in there or something like that. Today we're gonna to keep it nice and simple. And just set our little pork bits like this. I'm just gonna roll them tail to head. Here we go. So this is the hard bit over, I'm glad this bit's over. All right, because this is the hardest bit done. There we go, beautiful, ready to go. So, the next stage, I've got my sauteurs pan. So again, you've all got these on your stoves, uh, ready to go. And again, this is, this is my version of it. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna lightly butter. We're just gonna lightly butter the sauteurs. Just a little bit in the base of the pan. Just lightly buttered, okay? Take that out. And into the base of my sauteurs, I'm have a little trivet of finely chopped shallots. What I don't want to have is I don't want the fish sitting directly on the base of the pan. It could start to overcook. And these shallots are going to give my sauce a wonderful flavour. So you're going to need to dice a shallot and it needs to be really, really fine. As fine as you can get it. Because you want the shallot to cook. If the shallot's too chunky, it's never going to cook in time and your sauce will just taste the raw onion. All right, which again, which isn't what we're looking for. I'm also going to put in a little bit of thyme because I think that with orange, it's just going to taste really, really good. All right, so just in my little base like that. Very, very simple. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to lay my orpiettes on top. I'm going to put in a little bit of white wine. Getting this is measured out for you. And I've also got my fish stock as well. So I'm just going to pour this in two thirds of the way up the fish. I'm going to put this straight onto the solid top to get it cooking. Okay? Is everyone okay so far? Yeah? Okay, good. What I'm going to do one away for that is I'm just going to clean down. This is really, really important. Get all this out of the way. Give myself a tidy up. Just while I'm waiting for that to come to the boil. Really, really important. Right, cool. <coughs> and then my last little job is I'm going to make something called a cartouche. Are we all happy with that? Yeah, I mean, happy. No? Okay, we can show you. I'm going to show you now. Always worry when I make these that I'm going to end up with a chain of paper men or something like that. You know, I always get really nervous, especially with a crowd. So what I'm going to do is really, really simple. I'm just going to fold it in half. 
I like to keep it simple because that's just easier, isn't it? In half again to make quarters. And then where these corners meet is where I'm going to make my triangle. All right? I will show you this again. In fact, when I came to do uh, the Specialised Chefs, the interview process, part of this was to make a cartouche. So you had to, the lecturer that used to do it, used to make me make one of these. Yeah. So what we're going to do now, okay. And the idea is we're actually going to poach this in the oven. Yeah. So again, the reason we do that, the oven's about 160. 180 is too hot, it's going to boil. Let me get it in and then I'll start talking, because otherwise you'll be looking at me going, come on chef, I've got to get this cooked. So I'm going to put, once it's up to the boil, nice tight cartouche on, and into the oven, it's only going to take about five minutes, if that. Very, very delicate fish, we don't want to overcook it. In we go. We're poaching in the oven. We have a constant temperature, the fish is going to cook nice and evenly. If I was to do this on the stove, I would really struggle. It's going to get hotter, then I'll take off. It's going to get colder. We're, we're in control. We know what we're doing. Uh, right. Time. Minutes. Could do a time of five minutes. Someone. Cheers. Thank you. Perfect. So, everyone happy so far? Any questions? Sure. How are you enjoying the day? I need to fill out a while with this. Someone say something. Yeah. <laughs> I need to fill out my time. Yeah. Find all right? Yeah. Has anyone got any questions about the course or anything like that? No? Nothing? Fair enough. Anyone in the back got questions? <laughs> oh dear, come on. Have I explained it so well? Is that what it is? Yeah. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna think about preparing my garnish. So what I've actually got here already, already done, um, one of my students, we've just peeled the grapes. But we're too posh, grape skins, all right. So we always make sure we peel our grapes. Not for a salad, of course, you know, for, for a fruit salad or something, but for something like this, it's really, really nice to peel the grapes. So would you use a little spoon? You got a special spoon for that, have you? Yeah, well, it's not a special spoon. Oh, right, okay, fine. Teaspoon, yeah? Use a teaspoon, coming from where the stalk is, and just lift the skin off. One of my students will be able to help you if you want. And what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna soak these in a little bit of gram on here. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no expense spared. Real as well, look. Yeah. Was that you? Well, for the dish, I've always used an orange liqueur, but, but it's what we had in the bar, to be honest with really you. Yeah. When we did it, when I was in industry, we used to do it with Cointreau, yeah. but I just think it's that really nice, almost like lemon with fish. So if you think about yeah. lemon as an acid, it goes, why can't orange go with it? Does that make sense? That's, that's how I see it. Yeah. Um, and then the cold grapes macerated with the Grand Marnier with the hot creamy sauce. It's just an absolute joy to eat. Those that have had it before, I don't know, has anyone eaten it before? Where? Here. I've done it here. Mm. So peel the grapes, you just need like uh, six grapes. I'm just going to pour a little bit of Grand Marnier in there and then just leave that to sit. And I'm actually just going to put that in the fridge because I want these nice and nice cold. Mm, delicious. So what, while I'm waiting, I can do a little bit of uh, prep. We've got my bowl ready as well, so we're just gonna serve it in a nice bowl. Please make sure your bowls are nice and hot, hot food, hot bowl, really, really important. Again, while you're waiting, give yourselves a clean down, tidy up, that kind of thing. The sauce takes a little bit of a while. It's basically a full reduction sauce, okay? So we're gonna lift the fish out. We're gonna reduce the stock all the way down, almost to a syrup. And actually, you're gonna think I'm gonna go mad, but the sauce is going to talk to us, yeah? It's going to tell us when to add the cream. It's going to tell us when to add the butter. And because we use all our senses, what we should do when we're cooking. Yeah, we use our eyes, we're looking at what we're doing, we're tasting, we're smelling, but we're also listening. You know, even the temperature of a frying pan, you can tell if something's too hot, or if you can't hear anything, your pan isn't hot enough. So we're going to use all our senses while cooking this dish. Oh, my God. Oh, keep Three. Three minutes left. Uh, two, two I was going to say, I don't know what else to talk about, dearie me. So while we're waiting for that, we can just get some little bits done. So I've got a little bit of cream ready, and I've got a little bit of butter here as well. Um, it's a very rich dish, you wouldn't want this every day, um, but it's great for, for little special occasions. And I'm just going to dice about 50 grams of butter, and again I want this nice and nice cold, because we're actually going to monte the butter. 
uh, if I'm familiar with that term, we're going to gently emulsify the butter through the sauce to enrich it. So it's going to give it a lovely shine, it's going to give it a lovely richness, and it should taste delicious. I'm building this up a little bit. Hopefully, it's going to be good. All right. Here we go. I might have a little look at that because I reckon I'm not. Touch along. Smells delicious. Absolutely delicious. And there's something that's really nice about this dish. It's one pot cooking. Everything's contained in the sauce. So the juice coming out of the fish into the sauce, the shallots, the thyme, everything like that. There's if you go if you look in a book called the, the Le Repertoire, I won't bore you with it now. There's about six pages of sole dishes, different variations on this. So you can have a bursi, a bon fan with mushrooms and a steamed new potatoes, a poitel, a jucleur with concasse, I believe, solvant blanc. There's so many different variations. And you can actually do your own interpretations of these. Uh, obviously, just not today, because I'm asking for a sole variety. Right. I think what I will do is take these out. What a time. Is that the timer? I'll tell you what I'm putting in. Look at that, eh? I'll tell you what, I may have done this before. So what I'm going to do, yeah, all right, you know that. I'm actually just going to drain these. Right, right, The one thing about spec chefs is we're very thorough. Yeah, I think that's what we are, thorough. So I'm just going to lift that cartouche off now. So if you're it's unbelievable. And I'm just going to gently lift this. Beautiful. Look at that. Kept its shape. Yeah, Whoa. look at that, it's absolutely delicious. Lift down. And I'm just going to let them rest, all right? And just keep them somewhere out of the way. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to strain this off. Sorry, Andy. Into a cleaning pattern. Some people serve this with the shallots in it. I don't mind, really. I just think for today we'll we'll straighten them off. So, so old school, look. So very old school. Just remember when it comes out of the oven, the handle's hot. Um, it's so easy to do. I'm just going to strain that liquor off. Smells amazing. And now I just have to wait. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Are you sure. The reason we wait. Uh, well, I use salted butter. Is that what you meant by, yeah, yeah. I, I always, yeah, I do. I just think it's, yeah, you can use unsalted, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I use salt. No, you can put the grapes on ice before serving them. You can do grapes on ice, the problem is if you put the ice in, you can't have the grand in and the ice is going to dilute the flavour. So having them in the liquor, in the, in the fridge is fine. Yeah, good questions. Have you got any questions about the course? That specialised chefs? Huh? Any questions at all? It's a tough crowd, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> so the key now to this is full reduction. All right, so we're really concentrating those flavours. Okay. Again, that's what we're looking for. And if you were doing this to order, yeah, to make sure we're nice and organised. If you're doing this in a restaurant, so again, we'll just clear ourselves down. Lift that one. Yeah. So, like, again, it's all cooked. We're going to finish it as well with egg yolk. All right, we're going to put a little egg yolk into the sauce. It's going to make it very, very tricky because what we don't want to end up with is scrambled egg. All right, so we're going to, there's two ways you can make a savion and fold that through. We're going to stir half an egg yolk through the sauce and then we're going to glaze the fish and put it under the salamander. The egg's gonna help it glaze nicely. It's gonna give it a nice golden color, okay? But now we just have to wait. All right. Any more questions? Nothing. How's it going so far? Happy with the mooses? How did the observation test go? So? It was hard. 
Have we marked him yet? No, not yet. Oh, yeah. We not haven't. Yet. Have you gone through the answers? No, not yet. We could. We could actually, should we? Yeah. We're waiting for the fish. Should we do that? Yeah. I just don't want to rush this stock and. No. Yeah. Do you remember what you said? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Do you remember what you wrote, panel guest? Yeah. So number one, what did we think it was? The little top block. Sorry? Anyone? It was tamarind. So if you'd had a little taste, the sourness, you would have been able to tell. What about number two? The vegetable. I've grown this on my allotment as well. So I could talk about my allotment for two hours. Some type of squash. Anyone else? Sorry? You put? What did you put? It was kohlrabi. Kohlrabi. Have we used that before? No? It's really versatile. It's actually a brassica, I believe. And it's, you can eat it raw, you can pickle it, you can cook it, mash it down, make a puree. It's, it's a really versatile, underused as well, and actually seasonal at the moment. So what I'm gonna do while we're waiting for this, and we do have to be slightly patient. So you can go me a larger pan, and I'll just bring it down quicker. While we're waiting, I'm just gonna, cheers, man. You gotta have a bit longer, I'm just conscious of uh, eating up into your time, that's all. But it's so, so, so important. And there's a lesson here in not rushing and trying to cheat. I could take half this stock out now and just do it really quick. It isn't going to taste as nice. So it's really, really important to do it properly. All right, if that takes a little bit longer, so be it. But what I'm going to do while we're waiting is I'm just going to put these lovely fillets of fish into the bowl. They're nicely drained. The reason I've drained them is that if I put them straight into the bowl, as they rest, the juices are going to come out and that's going to thin my sauce down. So it's not going to have that lovely reduced sauce. Yeah, make it slightly watery almost, which is not what I want. How many of these are we doing? There we go. Sorry? How many of these are we doing? Just, Just going to be one sole. You can get two portions out of it. So I have got a spare bowl here, so I'll make two. So I don't know everyone will want to have a taste. So we'll put the other one in here like that. So do we need to do two then? Yeah, plate to plate seal, yeah, there's, there's, you'll have four fillets, so you're all going to have one sole to use. So yeah, and again, just keep them out of the way. Nice and warm. Just reducing this stock down, it does smell delicious. Absolutely delicious. Mild. Can we hear that? <laughs> it works, it does work. Can you hear that spitting sound again? Can you hear it coming now? It gets stronger and stronger. Here we go. Now we're looking at it. Can you see that's now like a syrup? So basically you're looking for a reduced syrup. For those that can't see, it's a lovely darkened syrup. See that? I'm happy? Yeah? In goes our cream. That's all I need. About 100 mils. And again, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this up to the boil, start to reduce, and I'm going to monte my butter through. All right? Did you hear that spitting sound? Yeah. So I'm going to take a seat then and then I'll show you how it I just wanted you to really see this up close. We're almost there. Please bear with. So we're looking now for this. So here we go. So if you can see it on the screen, look. Really nice, delicious sauce. Yeah, nicely reduced. Now I'm just going to take this off the heat. I'm just going to start to monte in my butter. If I boil it now and add the butter, it's going to split. The butter's just going to melt and it's going to sit on top of the surface of the sauce. So the butter needs to be cold as well. So the idea is that hot sauce passing over the cold butter, slowly emulsifying. And I'm just on the side here, shaking it in. How am I doing, Leslie? All right? Brilliant. Still awake? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so really shake. Yeah, it takes a while, but it's delicious. That's the key. There's a lot of skills on show here. Yeah, the filleting of the fish being the main one, and then a decent sauce. Yeah. You know, it's not tricky. You know, a lot of chefs would struggle to make this properly. 
and I'm taking my time and I'm shaking the butter in. I'm on, the camera's not amazing, but I'm just shaking that butter in. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? That's why, that's why I came here. <laughs> I couldn't cope. So just shaking that butter in, making sure it's all gone. That does look good. Beautiful shine, that's what we're looking for. So I can rest slightly easier now. Now here comes the tricky part. And what I'm gonna do, just on a little dish, we're just gonna put, hmm, I'm gonna clean one of them out. Uh, turn my seat down there. Half an egg yolk into the sauce. You can make this like a savion. Now this is the bit where it could all go wrong. It could all go wrong at this point. You've got a whisk there. Just a whisk, please. Glamorous assistant. Once the butter's in, please do not boil your sauce. It will all split. We're at, we're at a happy place now. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. And what I'm gonna do now, Smells amazing. I'm just going to put just a little touch of this egg yolk in. Whisk that in. If I was making more, I would make a savvy on. Just half an egg yolk whisked in off the heat. And I'm also going to add just a little splash of this. Come on. Make sure it's nice and warm. Look at this. I hope it's this good. I've built this up for the last half an hour. It better be good, isn't it? Hey, here we go. Ooh, we are happy with that. So what we're going to do now? Again, just make sure I'm nice and organised. And have a little taste. Taste, taste, taste. Oh, I love my job. I absolutely love my job. You want a little bit of acidity in this as well. Don't be afraid to put a bit more of this in. Just a little bit of acidity just to cut through. Well, I'll just glaze one so we can have a good. And all I'm going to do now is salamander on. It's the tricky bit. I've got everything in it, it's going to make a really nice glaze. I've got cream, I've got butter, I've got egg. Oh, look at that. Yeah? And I'm just going to put this under the salamander. If it all goes wrong, you'll get sent downstairs. So it should be fine. There we go. My cold grapes are ready. Let me turn that off because it's so hot. So the salamander get nice and hot. I just want a light golden colour. That's all we're looking for. Okay? So loads of skills in this. We've been quite mean this year. We have, that's your fault. No. Was it was me, it was me, wasn't it? No, I think it's really what's your top tip on the glazing? Because it's really easy, isn't it, to go over to the minute it just starts to go a little bit golden brown, even colour, turn it under the salamander as well. This just needs to get a bit hotter. Yeah, and I've just got my grapes ready as well, and then we'll serve. But that's the key to the glaze, just make sure the grill needs to get a bit hotter. Once it goes, it will start to go. Don't run off. Don't put it under the salamander and go, oh, go do something else. Make sure you stay and watch. And it will start to get nice and brown. I promise. There we go. Now we're starting to colour. And I'm just going to turn it slightly because these salamanders are older than I am, believe it or not. So we want to make sure we just keep turning it to get that nice golden colour. Oh, what a treat. I hope this tastes good. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I'm happy. A nice colour. Again, what I'm going to do now is just drain off my grapes because I don't want that excess. Put that in there now. 
I don't want to waste it. Yeah, we can drink that. No, we can't. We can't drink it until we finish. Such a joy. I've really big this up. I hope it tastes good. I'm sure it would. You'd love to come up then and have a little taste. Is that right? Nice colour here. I'm just going to finish it with my cold grapes dotted around. Served. I'll do another one for everyone else. Oh, yeah. Just so Sorry, yeah. You can just about see the glaze underneath. Yeah? You, you may not clap, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> 